Today's guest is Zadeka Terrell, a curator and visual artist based in Washington, D.C. She and her husband, James Terrell, are owners of Terrell Arts, D.C. Hi. It's very nice to meet you today. Hello, it's good to meet you and thank you guys for having me. Um, we just, I, I wanted to ask you a few questions about your career and your life. We understand that you're a self-taught artist. So let's start at the beginning. Um, I have been an artist forever. I got in trouble when I was in second grade because I was coloring earrings for the kids on paper and selling them. And um, the principal was like, you can't be selling stuff. So I've always been a person who's like, who's selling art and who was interested in different forms of art. Um, I started out doing so I was making jewelry and I made jewelry all through school until I got into college. And then I started making leather jewelry, wood jewelry, um, jewelry out of my art, bracelets and things like that. And I was painting skirts and painting clothes. Um, and then that evolved into a desire to learn how to paint portraits. And so I have been painting portraits now for probably 20 years. Oh, wow. That's a really <laughs> long time. I'm old. That made me feel so old. <laughs> um, so as a young artist, you built your skills by draw coloring in earrings made of paper, correct? Yes. Wow, yes. that's exactly. really original. Yes, it's a, it was a fun way to really get into it because I was then I was doing a lot of like markets as I got older. And so I would go to the market and like set up a little booth and I was selling my earrings and stuff. But when I decided I wanted to paint portraits, um, I started, I got a bunch of books about how to paint portraits and I just practiced and practiced and practiced. And I had read a book that said that it takes like 10,000 hours of doing something to master it, which broke down to if you are working on something for eight hours a day for like six or seven years, you hit those hours. And so that was my goal is I was like, okay, well, I'm going to master this. And so I made sure to draw every single day and practice every single day, even if it was like just something quick or something brief. So that's really, I did not know that it takes 10,000 hours to master something. Yeah, it's a cool book. I don't, you know, some people say that that that's not true, but I, in my experience, I think that even if the magic number is not like exactly 10,000, I think that doing something every day, there has to come a point where you become a master of it because you just are, you're practicing and your brain is learning and you're studying it. And so, you know, I think that, that I would always advise people, um, especially in art, to just do it every day. That's a great idea. Did you have a mentor to help you professionally in your career? I did. I've had a couple. So when I was um, in Denver and I was a lot younger, I was in this art collective called the Sankofa Art Collective. And a lot of the older people in there really helped me and they gave me a lot of advice. And then I moved to Atlanta and there's an artist there. His name is James Lee Brooks. And he had a studio next to the group studio that I was working in. And he was actually mentoring somebody else. But I was like, no, you're going to mentor me. And so I would go and get him lunch and just like come sit in his studio every day and like clean up and just like do things to constantly be around. And so he finally came and he gave me a critique. And his critique was, um, he was like, you know, you have a lot of talent and you can get there, but you don't understand anything about color. And I was like, what? Because up until that point, I didn't realize that there's more to art than just like being able to draw a picture. Like you really need to understand where the picture, like what's, where the eye falls on a canvas, for example, or like the golden ratio and like how colors interact with each other. And so he sent me on the path to really studying those things. And so to this day, he still, we keep in touch online and he still gives me um, insight and advice. And then when I got to DC, um, there was an artist who lived um, around the corner from me that um, happened. He used to be friends with David Driscoll and his name was Steve. And so then Steve was like really helping me and really teaching me and showing me um, some different things to do and challenging me in some different ways to grow. 
Wow, that's a really interesting story. You have to push to get an opportunity. Absolutely. And, you know, just not everything that everybody says is always going to be nice. And But sometimes you have to be able to hear like what people are saying that you should work on and not take it personal so that you can get better. And, you know, knowing when somebody is coming to you from love and when they're speaking to you from a place of love versus when they're just trying to like pull you down. Um, your husband attended art school. You were self-taught. What are the pros and cons of each approach? I think that um, there are a lot of valuable teachers that he had. Like he had teachers from Afro Cobra. He's had teachers like Faith Ringgold was one of his teachers. Um, so he's had some really amazing opportunities to sit at the feet of some of the greatest artists of our time. And that's something that I haven't had. Like I, I, would, I would love for Faith Ringgold to be able to critique my work or to look at my work or just to sit down in a room with her and talk to her. Um, and so I think that that's been really helpful. I think that having an art degree sometimes can open career doors a little bit earlier. So, you know, if you go for like arts administration or arts education, it's easier to get jobs teaching or to get jobs in certain museums that require a degree. Um, I think that for me being self-taught, I've been really lucky because I'm also just a very naturally disciplined person. And so, you know, I'm studying and studying and studying all the time, which opens doors for me. But sometimes I kind of have to go the harder way. You know, I have to really show my work ethic to get some opportunities that might have come a little bit easier if I had gotten a degree. Um, I don't have any college debt, so whoop whoop to that. <laughs> and that's always a good thing. Um, but I think that if you have an opportunity to pursue arts education, it's important that you go. And especially um, if you're a person of color or if you're black, because part of diversifying the museum scenes and the galleries is us getting those degrees so that we can apply for the jobs like curating at the museums and choosing the art or, um, you know, maintaining the art or helping other master artists. Discipline has really helped you along the way. Absolutely. And that's one thing my dad always said about me was that I'm really disciplined. Like I'm the type that um, every single day, you know, like I was watching this video on YouTube and the guy, he, um, he does a day in different people's lives. So he like tries out what different people's schedules are. So I was watching him, he was trying out Picasso's schedule. And somebody asked me like, what's important about my schedule? And I was telling them that every day, I spend at least an hour listening to videos about art business or about how to do certain things in art um, and just studying and trying to be better, you know, because things are always changing. And, you know, like right now I'm trying to learn how to like do TikTok and stuff. <laughs> and like that's, you know, my daughter's really into TikTok. And so she's trying to show me things and I'm, I'm watching videos because I need to learn because TikTok is the best place to sell art right now. Um, so I have to like figure out how to do it. And so that's just something like I just, that's, I get up at the same time and then I, I study while I'm working. I'm listening to different things all the time. I'll order books. Like if somebody recommends a book or something, I'll order it and have that resource, you know? So um, I think that really, if you love something, really being pushed to learn consistently about it is, can really change your life. I 100% agree with that. <laughs> What advice would you give to a young artist today? It would definitely be not to let people push the starving artist narrative. Um, there, That is not true. It does not have to be true. Um, and you don't have to, your story as an artist does not have to be about how you were struggling and it was so awful and it was so horrible. Um, there's so many jobs and opportunities in the arts. So even if, you know, you're a painter and you're young and you're just getting started, you know, like a lot of, I taught art in schools for probably about 15 years. And, you know, that's something that helped me grow in art, but also be in the art industry. I created arts programs for nonprofits for a number of years. And so, you know, now I do a lot of curating 
So there's a lot of different ways that you can use an art degree or an art skill and ways that you can get paid for your skills. Like I just hired a graphic designer to work on one of my projects. And so, you know, like she's that she's an artist full time, but she made the website and she made our flyers and everything like that. So, um, you know, don't ever feel like art is not worth studying and it's not worth investing in and don't let anybody talk you out of it. People said I was crazy when I said I was going to be like a big name artist. And now everybody calls me like, oh, my gosh, you're so amazing. And I'm like, I told you guys. So don't let anybody talk you out of it. You mentioned about curating. Could you tell us more about what it is and if you have any curating exhibits coming up? Yes. So curating is something that I actually just got really serious about. And what curating is, is it's when you um, choose the art for an exhibit and you choose how it's hung up. Um, on either a virtual gallery or in a physical gallery space or both. And so um, I've had the, op <clears throat> excuse me, I've had the opportunity over the last couple of years to um, curate a couple of youth art shows where we did like a call out for youth art and they sent art and we hung them up in the Pepco gallery in downtown DC. Um, I've curated for the last two years with a community art space called Bloom Bars. And I just got a grant with the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities to curate a show of 21 um, DC area art teachers showing their art from how they felt about the pandemic and the social unrest from last year. And so that exhibit is currently open right now. Um, and you can see it on our website, which is dcteacherartshow.com. And it's really cool because like it's your teachers. It's the people who, you know, who are helping you guys with your art really getting a chance to show their skill as artists. And so I love curating and there are some amazing programs, especially around this area. Like in Baltimore, there's MICA, which has um, one of the top curatorial programs in the country. Wow, I didn't know what curating was before and you explained it very well. Thank you. And then you know what else is I have learned that from this last experience that there's lots of places that have curators that we don't even think about, like um, banks that have art have a curator, um, hospitals that usually have galleries and they have a curator. Um, hotels that have art, they have a curator. And so there's lots of different places and lots of different ways that you can use. So like that's another way in the art world that there's jobs and there's opportunities that we don't even really think of. Wow, I hadn't thought of it like that before. Those were all my questions. Thank you for answering them and being here. And I learned a lot. And um, we I hope that I'll be able to catch your curating exhibit. Thank you. And thank you guys for having me. I had a really good time. And you did a really good job with the interview. Thank you. Now, that was a fun interview, wasn't it? But now it's time to see if you remember what they talked about. Time for the trivia question. The game is simple. You have four questions and you must answer them in five seconds. No exceptions to the rules. All right, let's begin. First question. What's unique about the Terrell Art DC business? Is it A, Zedeka and her husband are both fine artists? B, a father and son on, owns its Terrell Art DC. C, a daughter and mother owns it. The answer is A. Question two. The Terrell provides A, creative writing, B, fine arts and creating, art education and art representation services, or C, photograph classes and writing classes. The answer is B. Good job. Question three. How does Zudeka become an artist? A, she taught herself. B, a teacher taught her in school. Or C, from her mother. The answer is A. 
Hey, good job. Last and final question. Question, question four. What does Nadeka specialize in? A, creating art exhibits and art-based special events. B, photographs or C, digital art. And the final answer is A. You did it. And that's it for the trivia game. Did you get all the answers? I bet you did. Thank you for playing the trivia game. Today's inspired artwork is by Maria Benson and is inspired by Zadeka and James Terrell's exhibit called The Colored Section. <laughs> Negligence was never meant to last. So clear away the wreckage of the past. You clear away the wreckage of the past. And your current comes. Today you lost and lost. This is the day you've been working for. Working for. This is the day you've been hurting for. Hurting for. This is the day you've been aching for. Aching for. This is the day you've been waiting for. Waiting for. Though it was all on the horizon. Odds and Power is a youth-hosted and produced web series that highlights the work of performing literary and visual artists using their art to better the world. Arts and Power is a project through Montgomery Community Media's Youth Media Academy. Learn how you can support this and other MCM programs by visiting us at mymcmedia.org.